Well, Nestle announced this week that it would donate over a million and a half bottles of water to Flint through the summer after the state cut off water handouts last month. Stephen recently spoke with Flint Mayor Karen Weaver on American Black Journal about the conversation she had with Governor Snyder about stopping bottled water. Um, and it was a... Uh, it was pretty to the point, Stephen, when you talked to her about it. She's always really blunt about, about these things. And, and she's somebody whose message is always very sharp and refined. She was, I think it's fair to say, angry about the response she got from the governor about why they wouldn't continue the water. And water she also supply. talked about um, where they are in terms of, um, of replacing pipes. Go ahead and take a listen. I think it was a bad decision by the governor to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he said was, the water is testing good, so you don't need it anymore. And one of the things I said to him is, I'm aware of the test results yeah, we're getting. I, I mean, you know, why wouldn't I be paying attention to that? <laughs> right. and, the, and they are better, you know, and we're glad they're better. Who wouldn't want good water? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody deserves it. Why wouldn't we want good test results? I said, but our fight is we have not finished with the lead service line replacement. Right. We're almost halfway through. And one of the things we were told, and EPA has not changed their stance, was that when you're doing that amount of construction across your city, that those old pipes, lead particulates, can break off and get into sure. the system. Right. And so we still have to be able to protect ourselves. It's still a public health issue. And uh, so that was why it was so important for the, the bottled water distribution to stay in place. Yeah. The other thing was the test results we were getting back from the schools. 90% of the results were good, but 10% we were still getting very high results in our schools. Uh -huh. And and the third thing was it's a matter of trust. Yeah. You gave your word. You said that those pods would stay open indefinitely until we got through the uh, replacement of those bad pipes. And we knew it was only going to be at longest a three-year process. Right, right. And, and to, you know, do that, you know, I could have gone with things are better. Maybe you don't <laughs> need as much bottled water. We can go from eight cases a day to four cases. We can go from four uh, water distribution sites to two. Uh -huh. But they needed to stay in place because we still have families where the pipes haven't been where changed. Where the pipes aren't changed. And, and, and while we can argue that the water tests good, we have homes that test high because the in-home plumbing, the uh, uh, the fixtures have been damaged yeah. as a result. There's all kinds of uh, residual exactly. effects of this that, that, that still mean people don't have clean water. Uh, exactly. You know, uh, Michelle Wolf, the comedian. Thank you, Michelle uh, Wolf. <laughs> at uh, the correspondence dinner, the last thing she said is Flint still doesn't have clean water, and that's still true. Well, like I said, in, it's, in some cases, in some cases, because yeah. like I said, it may test good, but if your pipes haven't been changed, if you've got uh, uh, plumbing that has been destroyed, right. there's still an issue. Yeah. There's yeah. still an issue. And so, you know, we said... When you ask the governor what's going through his mind when he either makes these decisions or signs mm -hmm. off on them, what, what, do you, what does he say to you? You know, uh, well, I explained all of this to him. Yeah. And for him to have the remark that he did, which was Flint needs to get over it, Right. I don't know. I thought it was just a very that. callous, right. insensitive uh, remark, especially Does he when say those kind of things to you? He too? said that in the meeting yeah. to me, right. yes, and told me that I needed to come back when I had a different conversation. Yeah. I said, I'd like to have a different conversation, but right now the conversation is staying the same. Right. You know, uh, I had brought, it was so interesting because he wanted to talk about economic development, and we have yeah. been making progress with economic development. And I've taken my new economic uh, development director to the meeting yeah. as one of the people that went, hoping that the conversation would go well and we'd get to talk, talk about, about that, that as well. Yeah. But when he told me, you know, come back when you're ready to have a different conversation, I said the conversation is not going to change when we still have issues with our water. Yeah. You know. Uh, so, so what are we looking at in terms of the timetable for... Pipe replacement, mm -hmm. which you said you're about 50% yes. through. And then I think the bigger question is, uh, at what point do you feel like the people of Flint will be able to trust again that you go to the faucet, you turn the faucet on, and you're not worried about what's coming out? You know, uh, it's, it's interesting uh, because, you know, some people may never. Some people may never, yeah. uh, but we do want to go by the science. And right now what we've said is let us get all of those bad pipes out mm -hmm. and have good results over a stable period of time. But what, I was, what I've been uh, pushing for and looking for is sign off from the, the medical community, right. the public right. health community, the yeah. science community, uh, because uh, we needed them to, you know, even though 
uh, anybody knows brown water is bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but we did need them to validate that with data. And so we want them to validate the results that we get that it's good. And so that's who I'm using to determine when we can say, okay, we're through we're this. We're good. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned economic development, mm -hmm. and, and there is really uh, not just good news, but really good news, surprising is, news is coming is. out of the efforts that you're making to try to build the city's economy Right, I mean, up. and you know what, we can even start with something as ba basic as when we were handing out the water. Yeah. We said we want Flint people getting paid to do that. To now, do that work. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to package up the food, to do the education going door to door to let people know the proper use and maintenance of the filters. Let's hire Flint people. Mm -hmm. uh, when we got the um, the uh, construction contracts. Mm -hmm. We made sure that the contractors were from the city of Flint and then Genesee County. So we wanted to take care of our own first and we were very uh, good at doing that. I was excited to be able to have uh, one of the contractors is an African-American mm -hmm. uh, company, W.T. Stevens. And it was the first time in Flint's history that we had an African-American wow. company get a multi-million dollar contract. Wow. And they've hired a lot of people from Flint. And so have the other co the other companies. Mm -hmm. They have hired Flint workers and they're from Flint, uh, That's the great. companies. But we just, you know, one of the things I was telling you earlier is Lear Corporation has come into Flint mm -hmm. and built a factory. Uh, they've invested 30 or 31 million dollars wow. in the city doing this and it's the first time we've had a factory built in Flint in over 30 years.